Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel and today we're gonna to be going over five tips that could help absolute beginners get better. All right, before we get started, I'd like to set a few ground rules. So first of all, this is not everything a beginning writer needs to know. I'm assuming that you already know things like the basics, how to operate your clutch and your throttle to get the bike moving. Most of these tips are things that I think that if I would have understood or really knew about uh, when I first started writing, um, I probably would have progressed a little bit faster. Now tip one seems kind of like a cop out a little bit because this tip, this really isn't a tip. This is a, this is just something that shouldn't have to be said, but does. You need to wear all of your gear, starting from your head all the way down to your feet. You need to protect yourself. This is really, really important because as a beginning rider, it's highly likely that you're going to crash. And although most of those crashes are going to happen at low speeds, there is a potential for you to get injuries and injuries cause people to want to quit. If you protect yourself properly and you wear all your gear, you're going to feel more confident that if you do go down, at least you're protected. It's going to be the times that you choose or forget to wear gear, certain types of gear. Like if you forgot your elbow pads, that's going to be the time that you crash and needed your elbow pads. Basically, it's like a Murphy's Law of dirt bikes. When you're not wearing it is when you needed it the most. Also, when it comes to gear, you want to make sure that you're buying gear that fits you correctly and you're not buying the cheapest stuff. Now, there's a lot of cheap gear out on the market, but in reality, a lot of that gear is not going to protect you. And I will tell you right now, I would not try to save money. I did this in the past. I will never do this again. I'm not going to try to save money on the helmet, the boots, or the goggles. Those are just three things that I'm not going to try to save a couple bucks on. All right. Tip number two, you need to ride as often as you can. So you could watch YouTube videos like this one, and you could watch ones from much better riders than me who could tell you all the secrets, everything they know about riding. It's not going to make you a better rider. This will feel a little weird. Whoa. All right, there is absolutely no substitute for getting out on the bike and riding it. All right, so you gotta put in the seat time. No, not that kind of seat time. First things first, you're gonna need to get familiar with your controls. How they're positioned, you need to position where they're comfortably set one thing that pe a lot of people overlook when they're setting up their handlebars or their controls is they set them up while they're sitting down and if you're doing dirt biking right uh, you need to set them up for when you're standing up okay where are those controls when you're standing up on your pegs in the attack position once you get your controls in a position where they're comfortable and some people say straight ahead maybe tilted a little bit down i like mine tilted just a little bit down when they're they're easily reached and comfortable to grab the next thing you want to work on is clutch control. We're talking about working your clutch and your throttle in unison. If you find yourself stalling out a lot, you probably don't have very good clutch control. Clutch control is really important because it's going to come into play when we start getting into the more technical aspects of riding. Uh, when you're crawling up rocks, when you're going up hills, things like that. If you just let that clutch go and just forget about it, take your finger off and you're just riding along with no finger on the clutch and you're not feathering or anything like that, it's gonna be much more difficult to keep the bike under control. Your clutch is going to add and remove power to that rear wheel. When it comes to uh, going over rocks or doing hill climbs, you're gonna want to be able to add and remove power to that rear wheel constantly and if you're not controlling the throttle in concert with your finger on the clutch, you're gonna stall your bike out a lot. All right, so when it comes to clutch control, what I like to do is when I want to remove power from the back wheel, I will start to pull the clutch in and you'll hear the engine start to rev higher and then I will start releasing the gas. This happens very quickly and almost simultaneously, but that is exactly what I'm doing. Clutch first, gas released. When I want to add power to the rear wheel, I'm going to start adding the gas first, just a little bit, okay? And then I'm gonna start letting the clutch out. My finger 
never leaves the clutch. At least one finger is always on the clutch. One really big thing about this when you're getting to know your bike is you're gonna need to learn how the bike responds in different situations. And what I mean by different situations is really different types of terrain. Uh, one of my nemesis when I first started riding, uh, when it comes to terrain, was rocks. I hated rocks. I couldn't stand riding on rocks. Uh, next up would be sand. I couldn't stand riding in sand. And the reason for this is, is because the bike actually responds differently in rocks than it does on normal ground. It responds differently in sand than it does in rocks and different than it does in, in, in normal conditions. And what this does is it changes the way that you ride depending on the terrain you're riding on. An example of this would be now when I ride in rocks, I like to lean a little further back out over the back fender and add a little bit more gas to get that front end light and go through them fast. This seems counterintuitive. Most people want to slow down when they're in the rocks, but you need to be standing up, leaning back out, and keeping that front end light because you don't want that front end to drop down in between the rocks. You want it to kind of just float and tap the rocks and you glide back, you glide right over the rocks with your back wheel. The minute you let that front end get a lot of weight on it and drop down into the crevices between rocks, that's when you start to get into trouble where you've got a really sharp faced or flat faced rock and your front tire hits it and you kind of just come to a stop, you stall the bike out, fall over, all that good stuff. I'm not saying rip through it at full throttle, I'm just saying keep the front end light and keep a steady pace, all right? And you don't need to gas it a lot, you just need to keep a steady throttle. If there was just one thing I could tell you probably when it comes to throttle is steady. Keep it steady. And this goes for sand too, especially in sand. Your throttle, you need to work it very smoothly, all right? When you turn in sand, it's a lot different than when you turn on dry ground or hard packed ground. When you turn in sand, you go into the turn actually with a little power and you hold that power through the turn. And once you've kind of gotten halfway through the turn, you're starting to come out, you can add more throttle and just blast out of that turn. There's different riding techniques for when you're riding on mud. And that's another thing. So you need to get out on all these different types of surfaces and feel how your bike's reacting and see what works. You need to work or practice shifting your weight around on the bike. And that's my next tip. All right, so one of the biggest misconceptions that I had when I started riding after I was looking at all these videos on how to do turns and how to ride the bike, it was all about where to put my weight. Where should your weight be? Uh, a lot of people say, hey, get your weight on the front of the bike when you go into a turn. I'm not telling you that that's wrong. What I'm saying is your, your weight isn't going to stay there. Your weight should never be static. Your weight should never be just one spot on the bike at all times and you don't move it. You should always be constantly adjusting your weight to the situation. So I suggest that you get out there and practice a lot with shifting your weight, seeing what happens when your weight is in different spots on the bike. You're gonna learn quickly that a lot of the times when you think the bike was gonna crash or it's gonna go down or you're gonna let it drop, that had you just shifted away your weight a little bit more in one direction or the other, you could have saved that and stopped that from happening. Uh, number four, I probably should put this as number one. Stand up, stand up. Listen, here's the deal. You should be standing up. Stand up as much as possible. And I'm just as guilty as anybody else, all right? I do it all the time where I sit down on the bike, but you want to try to stand up as much as possible. When you're sitting down, all of the forces that your, your suspension doesn't soak up, which even if you have a really good plush suspension, your bike still is gonna soak up some forces from, from the G forces of hitting rocks, G outs, ditches, whatever it is. Your bike's soaking up that stuff and it wants to transfer it somewhere. And where is the seat going to transfer it? Right up your spine. I see this all the time and I'm amazed because I consider myself a very inexperienced rider and I see this with, with in races, some of the other riders who I know have had to be riding longer than I have, sitting on their bikes, going through rocks and they're bouncing all over the place. And when you're bouncing all over the place, you really don't have a whole lot of control. If you, you're bouncing so much that your feet are coming up off the pegs, you're squeezing tight with the handlebars, just trying not to go flying off. That's not, not how you wanna be. You wanna stand up on your bike. And the reason is, is because when you're standing, your knees and ankles can take up some of that shock that would have got transferred right up through your spine. And you can keep your head and shoulders level and straight. You can kind of maintain stability. If your head's bobbling around and your shoulders are bobbling around and your back's bobbling around, your feet are coming off the pegs, you're gonna lose control quickly and you're gonna probably crash. Uh, when you stand up, you want to stand up 
with your knees tightly gripping the bike. Kind of want to point your toes in a little bit. You don't want to exaggerate this and have your heels hanging out to the sides. Just kind of point your toes a little bit inward and squeeze tightly with your legs on the bike. Because this is what's really holding you on the bike. You know, it's doing most of the work. Your hands really shouldn't be. If you are trying to hold yourself on the bike with your hands, what ends up happening is your forearms and your hands get exhausted. They start to cramp up and then before you know it, you're exhausted and tired. You kind of want your arms to be a little bit loose and relaxed. You want your elbows up high, but you want to be kind of relaxed. You want to be in a position where your legs are gripping tightly and from your hips, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your arms, you've got lots of room to move around. You don't wanna be tensed up, you don't wanna be tight. Now as the bike reacts underneath me, if it gets kicked to one side or it gets kicked to the other or the back end gets kicked up or the front end gets kicked up, I can soak all of that movement in and let the bike move, move around all at once underneath you. You don't wanna be tensed up tight, hanging on for dear life and not moving your body. Let's talk about why people uh, sit down a lot and don't stand. I would say the number one reason is that people who are shorter can't reach the ground already when they're sitting and standing up kind of makes them a little bit more nervous. It actually puts you higher up, so it can be a little scary in some situations. Uh, probably the next biggest reason people like to sit down is because they're exhausted. And then finally, there's people who just can't control the foot controls when they're standing up. From the standing position, it gets kind of difficult to get your foot under the shifter and shift. Um, so you should practice that. Practice that as much as possible. You want to do the same thing with your brake. Try to brake while you're standing up. All right, and number five, this is my last tip. Number five, you're going to crash, okay? It's going to happen. It happens to everybody. And here's why this becomes really important. If you constantly think, I'm going to crash, I'm going to crash, I'm going to crash, guess what? You're going to crash. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Look where you want your bike to go not where you think it's going to crash. If you are looking at the spot that you don't want the bike to go because you, you're pretty sure that if you go that direction, you're going to, you're going to crash, you're going to crash. If you're looking down right in front of the fender or right where the wheel is, because you're like, oh my gosh, these are rocks. Look, look at where my wheel's going. That is a horrible idea. You're going to crash. You need to be looking ahead. You need to give yourself time to react to what it is that you see on the trails. If you're looking far enough ahead, you're gonna see this big rock or whatever it is that you don't wanna hit long before you get there. As soon as you identify something that you do not wanna ride into or ride through, you are looking for the spot that you do want to ride through and you're focused on that spot. If you focus on that spot, your body will take you there. Your bike's gonna go that way. So look where you wanna go, not where you wanna crash. All right, so that's my five tips. I hope that helps you guys out a little bit. Um, I'd like to do a lot more of these. I really haven't done anything like this before, but I think I'm getting to the point now where, where I might have some insight that'll help a younger rider or somebody that's just starting out. If you were here just to criticize the tips that I'm giving other people, uh, you know, have fun trolling. The, the comment section is right down below. Go ahead and leave your comments. Um, tell me how much I'm wrong. Okay, so let's run back down the list. Number one, wear all of your protective gear all the time. Number two, get familiar with your bike by spending as much time riding as you possibly can. There's no substitute for experience and you need to get your seat time in. Number three, practice shifting your weight. You should not have your weight just in one spot the whole time that you're riding. Different situations call for you moving your body to different positions on the seat or on the bike or standing up, okay? Number four, we're on number four. Stand up as much as possible. I know we get tired and we have to sit at certain points. Um, it's inevitable that you're gonna sit down, but as soon as you possibly can get back on your feet, get on your feet. Riding from the standing position gives you so much advantage. Number five, you're gonna crash, okay? It's gonna happen, it happens to everybody. Don't sweat it, just pay attention to what you're doing. Always look ahead, look where you wanna go, not where you wanna crash. Make sure you're wearing all your gear so you're prepared for a crash. Be prepared to bail out if you have to, and be prepared to stick with it if you, if you can get out of it, you'll be surprised a lot of the time that if you stick with it, you can actually get out of most of the things that you think are going to cause you to crash. But if you're solely focused on, hey, I'm going to crash, you probably are, bail out. So that's going to do it for these five tips. I didn't say these are the top five tips. I just said these are five tips. There's a lot more out there when it comes to riding dirt bikes. Uh, but these are five things that I thought were really important to share with you at this time. 
and hopefully I can get one of these videos done again soon. All right, so thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.